five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. From the most infected city in America, New York, it's Alex Bennett and the Ramble, and we go until uh, midnight Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen, there she is. Here we go once again every two weeks with the ex-wife, uh, with the uh, uh, proprietor of uh, timegoesby.net, Ronnie Bennett. Hello, Ronnie. Good morning. Good morning. And, and we should sing happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Ronnie, happy birthday to you, but I have to do it a second time happy because I'm washing my hands at the same time. Happy birthday to oh, you. Stop. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> You're supposed to. That's that's the uh, the thing. You're supposed to what? Uh, uh, sing it twice, and yes, while you're 20 watching, it's approximately yes, yes. Yeah, twenty. Yeah. There's some place online I ran into that has a whole list of other songs we would all know if you get tired of "Happy Birthday," which I'm pretty tired of. Yeah, yeah. Well, "Inagata Devita" is not one of them because that ah, goes on for beautiful <laughs> forever. Uh, so, how you doing? You weren't feeling so well last time we talked. I'm okay. I'm all... Did you get better? Uh, well, no. I mean, two weeks ago, I was really sick. Uh, so, how you doing? Um, you weren't feeling so well last time. And I had so a fever well and uh, body pains and, you know, stuff, sick. Uh, and I talked with a doctor. I don't know if I talked to the doctor when we spoke, but I spoke on the phone with them. And they, and oh, and I had some trouble breathing. I was using oxygen at home. So, you know, that kind of scares you a little. A little <laughs> you know? bit. I would say that's uh, concerning. Pardon me? I would say that's concerning. Yes. But the doctor um, said that he didn't think it was, but if my breathing got any more difficult to call 911 and go to the emergency room, well, let me tell you. That'll get you well really soon. <laughs> I mean, nobody wants to go to an emergency room. And, uh, you know, I was two days, two and a half days of really, really sick in bed. And then it started to get better, and I'm much better now. So I'm, I'm well. Maybe and it the was. Maybe. just thought that it was, he said, you know, at any given moment, there are tons of other bugs we don't know anything about that people get all the time. Cause runny noses or a little bit of flu right, and that right, sort of thing. right. And he doesn't believe it was corona. And, you know, according to what everybody's telling us, I don't think I could, with my lungs, I could live through corona. So it must have been something else. Yeah, yeah. Well, in any event, you're you're better now, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we, 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 we're sitting here in the middle of the most infected city in America, New York. And it's just, you know, uh, it's strange. It, to begin with, at night, it's unearthly quiet. It's mm -hmm. just, you could hear a pin do you, drop. Do you go out and take part in the applauding at 7 p.m.? No. Why? Well, I didn't know there was applauding at 7 p.m. In New York City, yes, to applaud all the health care workers and other people that are helping. I hadn't heard about that. Oh, it's all over the Internet. Well, maybe it's over the Internet, but it ain't happening. I don't hear it happening here at 7 o'clock. I don't hear applauding outside. Uh, but it's... It, you could hear a pin drop, and up until a few nights ago, the only predominant sound you heard were constant sirens. You know. Yeah, a lot of people have said that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and I, in the last couple of like last night, I've noticed an absence of, si of of sirens. So you know that's that's my sign that things are maybe getting a little better, you know. But well, except that New York had more deaths in the past 24 hours than they ever have before. Well, they say that's because all the people that have been on ventilators for more than the time that you can stay on a ventilator had finally gone and died. And so uh, what that peak was was maybe something that happened several weeks ago when we first put them on the ventilators, and that was the result now. So that, that they think that's the reason why. It's not that things have gotten worse. It's just we've reached this peak. So... Who knows, you know. 
but uh, it's it's starting to drive me a little batty. You know, I'm going, I'm getting hey, stir you know, crazy. I'm with the people who say things like, um, the Blitz went on in London for several months, and people every night were down in the subways or the other th underground, mm -hmm. and they did it. And this one is really kind of grabs at your heart. And Frank lived in a closet for two years. I don't have any right to complain about anything. No, you know, you're you're absolutely right about that. I mean, I'm very fortunate. I have an apartment that's 2,500 square feet. And if you're going to get cabin fever, it's going to be very large cabin fever. Uh, but still, after, what, four weeks of not going out? I went out twice, and that was very quickly. Uh, but... You know, four weeks of that already, and you start getting squirrely. You know, you start getting a little weird. And uh, I, I feel sorry for people who only have, like, you know, a studio apartment and have to be stuck inside that studio apartment. It's like being, it means may as well put an ankle bracelet on yourself, you know? It's like being in a cell. Um, Alex. Yeah. You're not in an ICU. Well, no, no, I, you know, we can always say things could be worse, but what I'm saying is things as they are for us here in New York. I mean, the, the, everybody's living in fear. Everybody's living with uh, not going not out and not having social contacts. I mean, there are a whole bunch of elements that we are, are faced with here in New York that we're not usually used to being faced with. Alex, it's not New York. It's everywhere. Uh, I got to tell you, I, I disagree with you. Here in New York, it is worse than it is anywhere else. To be home? No, the situation. I guess I'm confused. I thought you were talking about not liking being home. Oh, no, no. That That's, listen, uh, 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 I, I'm staying home for a couple of reasons. Number one, my age. Uh, and and what might be compromising conditions, as you would probably feel the same way, uh, and also because I feel a certain sense of patriotism not to go outside. Patriotism? Yes, because I'm helping my fellow man, you know, uh, by not going out, by maintaining my distance, by doing what our governor says we should do. Um, uh, I think anybody, I have one guy I know who has a business of, uh, he has a carpet business, and he's still laying carpet in California. And I'm going, why are you doing that? And he says, well, I'm not sick. I don't have a temperature. And I said, you could be asymptomatic and be passing it on to other people. You know, the job is, job one is to stay as far away from other people, outside of people who already live in your home, like in the, my case, Marjorie, um, and it, it's it's our duty to, to 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 help nip this thing because this social distance is starting to show uh, a positive effect, at least here in New York. Uh, but we've been hit with it on an on a on an epic scale. I mean, compared to any other city in the United States, we're ten times more than any other. Uh, any other state in the in the United States, so it's it's scary, okay, at the very least. Uh, and I had to, for instance, I had to go have a, a CT scan um, that was, I had to have after a month after my seed implant, and um, uh, they said just come on up to Mount Sinai and blah, blah, blah. and I said no way. I said, I'm not going to Mount Sinai. They said, okay, we can hold it off for three months. They said, will you go get a blood, can you go get a blood test? And I checked into it, and I said, yeah, I can walk down to uh, one of these labs. It's in the neighborhood about eight blocks away. And I said, I can probably keep distance. And then I got wrote them back and said, I'm even frightened to do that. And they said, okay, wait, wait a couple of weeks till this thing goes over to the other side. So... Uh, I, I, I don't even want to go out for stuff like that, you know, because I, I just, I see going to a lab as being, or a hospital as not being the best places to go at this point. Obviously not. <laughs> you know, 
So, I mean, it scared me enough, and I don't usually scare by this stuff. This stuff doesn't scare me usually. You never had any stuff like this before. What are you talking about? Uh, let's see here. Have we? No. The only thing. Not in your lifetime. The only thing that was comparable to it in our lifetime was didn't affect you or I, and that was AIDS. Uh, AIDS was pretty much, I would say, if you were gay, that was a pretty scary time to be living in, you know. Uh, but uh, so how is everything in Oregon? Oregon's uh, actually sending us some ventilators, or was that yes. why? Yes, uh, yes. because you you don't seem to be having the problem. That we're just later. I mean, I, no places. It's not that. Every that, that you guys have it worse, you just got it first. I don't think that the condition that New York is in, in terms of numbers of cases and deaths, I don't think that. I mean, there's just the numbers because of the size of the yeah. city, but per capita, I don't know that it's not going to happen to every place. Other places are further behind. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I, that right now we're not using those, and so the governor decided to ship them off to somewhere that could really, really use them. And since there's no central organization for the small number of ventilators and other things that are needed, the governors are working together, and and I mm -hmm. think they're doing the best they well, can. It, it, I mean, I think yeah. Cuomo's terrific. This was a terrific thing for our governor in Oregon to do, and mm -hmm. it's happening with other governors. and. Um, and I just think it was, it kind of got the ball rolling of doing that kind of thing when she did that, when she announced it, I think it was Friday. Yeah, well, the, the, you know, Cuomo's idea was a very solid one, and that is, we need them, send them. When we don't longer need them, we're going to send them to you, and then we'll send them to the next hot spot, and then they'll send it to the next hot spot. In other words, let's all work as a nation, let's not work as, you know, 50 separate states who just are all hoarding their uh, their ventilators that they might not need at this moment. So I I, th I think that was a very good plan. I think it's nothing our president would ever think of, but, you know, a good plan. Uh, our president thinks you just can take a pill and solve the whole problem, a pill that will give people heart attacks. <laughs> so, you know. He's, I think he's going to appoint himself Surgeon General at some point here. You know. Well, I, 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 I try not to. I, I, I can't think last time he said anything that we needed to know in terms of the virus. Um, he says he's been doing a lot of other things that I can't imagine how a president should have all the time that he has to be firing all these people in the last two or three da days. He's hired, he's fired five or six people. Well, it seems to me. Yeah. I mean, the press secretary, who never held a press conference, yeah, right. there, uh, she's gone. Uh, another in inspector general is fired. Mm -hmm. uh, he had something to do with firing the captain of that boat where there were so many sick sailors. I mean, it, how would you even have time to think about these things? <laughs> you would think, like you would think that on. your entire concentration would be on this epidemic, you know? And um, uh, I also like the fact that he, ta he, he takes claim for things that he had nothing to do with, like the opening of the Jacob Javits Center as a hospital. That was Cuomo's doing. But he says, oh, and we're sending all this. And we opened up the there. He acts like it's him. To be fair, he sent in, I think it's some military force. I don't know if it's the National Guard or yeah. Army or whomever, but medical people from the armed services. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that can't come from Cuomo. That has to come from a president. Right. So, you know, don't... There's so many things he could be, you know, painted with a black brush. Let's not do the ones we, that he actually did. Uh, <laughs> Let's, should we, tr we, should try, we should try and encourage him. Well, you know what they said, though, is the most terrible thing is these governors feel they have to pay obedience to him in order to get anything out of him. They have to compliment him. They have, if they say anything bad about him, they won't get the stuff they need. Mm, you know, including, including Dr. Burks. Yeah, yeah. Um, after she did that with him, I just, I just don't listen to her anymore either. You know? Right. 
I don't know what I can trust out of anybody's mouth. Anymore. Well, I have a nickname for her, Scarfy. She's always oh, wearing the scarf. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that, that's like a guy who thinks a comb over is going to prevent people from thinking he's going bald. You know. Well, no, I mean, women wear scarves. I mean, she just does it more than most women. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, well, how, how do you feel about Fauci? I mean, uh, he, he, I, when I watch him, I think he just wants to burst out at some moment and just say, shut the hell up. But then he doesn't. Well, you know, none of us can get inside somebody else's head. Um, I think that... Was it yesterday or the day before that he wouldn't let him, Fauci, answer a question yeah. from one of the, and then attack the journalist who asked the question to? And uh, yeah. Fauci tries. He tries really hard without being the ass kisser that some of the others are. Yeah. And it's an, I couldn't follow that. I couldn't do that successfully. He's done it quite successfully. I mean, I just would have lost it at some point. Um, and he's just, ama <laughs> he's just amazing that he somehow, you know, he kind of just lets the president talk and then he does, until, unless the president doesn't uh, allow him to, and then he, he speaks his piece, whatever it is, even if it contradicts the president. And maybe Trump understands that Fauci has become so trusted in these past few weeks, that it would be a major debacle for Trump if he fired Fauci from his team. Yeah, yeah. Well, Fauci is the one person that everybody listens to. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it's like he he does this tap dance, which I don't, I wouldn't be capable of doing because it would just drive me crazy. And that tap dance is like when. Trump gets up and says, these pills, I'm going to take one myself. Everybody should take these pills. The government just bought 92 million of these pills, right? The chlora, whatever it is. And, um, uh, you know, maybe it might work, but most people think that the evidence is anecdotal and it, it, there's no proof that it, it is a cure-all. And secondly, it is, it, it, can it is essential for people. I've forgotten the other one. Lupus. But because I but, loop, but there's another yeah. two besides lupus. And that because apparently doctors, because of Trump, doctors are prescribing this drug to all kinds of people so that now there's a shortage. And there are people that the drug really works on their disease, like lupus, right. as you said. Right. Um, it, it not only works. In the case of lupus, they have to take it on a rather continual basis. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, here we've created another shortage. And because he sits up there and says something which has no basis in fact, and even if he felt it were true, he should have kept his mouth shut till we knew the evidence was in. You know, you know there's been there have been reports that I don't think are well corroborated yet this morning. This is Tuesday for people looking at this, that Trump is connected financially to a company that makes that drug. Really? I don't know if that's true. I, I've, I've seen a couple of reports. I don't think they're corroborated yet. Wow. Uh, if that were true, that, that there's another there's another uh, uh, impeachment for you. <laughs> you I, know? I mean, but, but it was just totally irresponsible on his part. And when he did it originally, they said it was irresponsible. And then he doubled up on it, you know? I mean... You know, yeah. When you do you watch Cuomo? Oh, every day, every day, every day. It's like our it's like our go to show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, I imagine, and it's not difficult to speak as he does. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That yeah. he tells the truth as difficult as some of the truths are, he tells them that way. Yeah. When he, I think today and yesterday, talked about maybe, maybe, maybe the curve is flattening a little bit in New York. But he also makes it clear that we don't know that yet. This could be, just be a one-day blip. Mm -hmm. And treats us as um, adults, which yeah. we are. Yeah. yeah, and he acts like one. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It, um, 
Uh, he 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 has uh, gained. A, you know, I was I was on the fence about him on a lot of things, but I got to tell you, this has sold me on him as a leader. I mean, he knows how to lead. He knows how to lead by example. He knows how to lead by by doing what it takes to calm people down. You know, I'm surprised. Uh, there was one person that handled a crisis like this pretty well, and that was Rudy Giuliani when uh, we had 9-11. For whatever I think of Rudy Giuliani, he wrote the textbook on how you comport yourself while something like this is going on. Why Trump never went to him for, you know, advice on how to handle this is beyond me because he had the guy that wrote the book on it. I don't, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you remember, you remember, you remember, you remember, Gi an you remember Giuliani getting up there every day, talking to the public, calming them down, saying what they were doing. You didn't feel he was lying to you. You know, the same thing that Cuomo's doing now. Uh, and, and Cuomo is just, I, we, we look forward to it every day. And then I, I call the thing in the evening the Trump comedy hour. I you don't know. look at it. Uh, you know, it, it, he hasn't said anything yet that made a difference in my life or understanding what's going on, so I don't see the point. Yeah, well, he, he is the perfect example of if you can't be sincere, at least fake it. And he's doing a bad job of faking it. He can't read a speech. He can't read what's on a piece of paper in front of him. I mean, how are we supposed to have any confidence in that? You know? And then Nobody if the ducks except his his you know, his forty percent of the of America, I guess, forty plus percent that think he's doing a great job. Yeah, but then also, I mean, uh, <laughs> he then goes out and lashes out at the press who's there. When somebody from the press starts asking a question, he immediately interrupts them before they can finish asking the question. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, he, he, and then he talks about them being disrespectful to him. I mean, come on, you, you get what you give out. I mean, <coughs> it, it, we're, in a time like this, we need somebody better. We need somebody who can, you know. We, aren't, we don't have it, so, you know, it's... What's the phrase some people have used? They go to war with the, with the army you have, you not, have. The, you, not the army you wish you had. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah you know. And I, but I just, I just, I, I really, I feel uh, really let down by this president. Uh, I mean, it's fully what I expect out of him, but I, I, I feel let down by him. I, I imagine that at a time like this, he would somehow show something. And he's shown nothing but the worst kind of leadership you could have in this crisis. And I, I was thinking the other day, what would Obama have been, done in this situation? Uh, would he have been able to handle this? Well, what the first thing you can know that is he wouldn't have held an election rally every afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. I kind of, I, I, I don't really. I don't know. I, can't, I guess I'm trying to say, and I, I don't know how to say it politely, as I don't really care what Obama might have done. He's not here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, he's not the president. Yeah. But um, if it, I don't know. You know, it's it's that there are a lot of there are a lot of examples of presidents having behaved quite wonderfully in terrible circumstances in history. Right. Right. And um, and and they're the obvious comparisons, you know, Roosevelt in World War Two, and um, uh, yeah, I I don't know. It uh, it's difficult. It's difficult. Well, there are people who know how to lead a country in the time of crisis. FDR was a perfect example of one who could. He, two crises. One was the, the Depression, followed by the war. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a, another case would be in England, uh, Winston Churchill knew how to, by the mere force of his own personality, rally people and make them feel better and make them feel they were, had a common purpose. This president does none of that. And this is... You know, you know what you're saying is very important. Um, is that we don't have someone, any of those people, those historical ones that we're talking about, would have known 
how what to say to us to make it okay to stay in even when we're chafing at having to do that right and to keep reminding us and make us feel um that we're contributing for doing that I and mean, one of the big problems i have is i have no way to contribute yeah and um and i think you know this morning there are headlines of grocery people dying and i remember when i was in the grocery store it's been a week ago now last time um and i don't need to go for another week um uh, that they weren't wearing masks. They had done a bunch of other things around the store, mm -hmm. but I was concerned about them. They're see I'm seeing them for 30 minutes. They're there all day with God knows how many people mm -hmm. coming through. You know, well, I have to say yeah. that I was really, uh, you know, the, the people I know who work in my supermarket, we kept our six feet difference. We waved and said hi to each other, and exchanged pleasantries and how is your family that sort of thing. And then there was a point where I was standing on tiptoe trying to get something off the top shelf. And a woman come up who wanted something on the bottom shelf near me and leaned right into me. What? What are people thinking? I, I just don't What about it. social distancing? Don't you understand? Hey, you know what? We've run out of time. Okay. You know, a lot to talk about here. Uh, so are you staying primarily indoors? Not primarily, just yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, the, I've, I've worked it out that I can go to the grocery store every couple of weeks. I'm, I'm having, I wrote about it yesterday, I'm having an ice cream Jones now that we're getting the sunshine outside. Um, and I almost left the house to go buy some, which I would have done in the past. Right. And I thought, oh, wait a minute, lockdown, <laughs> you got to stay home. And so, yeah, I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> Yeah, Marjorie gets uh, gets up. At, she's gone to the market on a couple of occasions because she gets up early. So she goes at seven o'clock in the morning when they open up. She made a big mistake on Monday. She went to it on Monday and there was nothing on the shelves. No, there's nothing there. You have to wait till later in the day and later in the week. Yeah, yeah right. Um, right. Because there haven't been deliveries and there are haphazard deliveries as it is now. If you go, they, they set aside, you know, this early, early 7 a.m. thing for old people. Yeah. Well, they haven't cooked the cooked chickens yet. They haven't put out the produce. They haven't put out the meat. You know, there's nothing there you need. They haven't exactly. filled the dairy counter for milk and so on. Hey, we better call this quits because I got to get to my citizen panel. But I want to thank you so much once again. And a happy, happy birthday. Thank you. This is number 79, right? Yes, I never expected to be here. Well, you're here, and you're still kicking, and you better, otherwise I'm going to be mad as hell. Well, Ladies and, <laughs> we'll worry about that then. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, timegoesby.net is her blog, Ronnie Bennett. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. Five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Always a pleasure to have Ronnie with us, and I'm sure you enjoy her as much as I do. I, it's fun, and I, I do enjoy her more than when we were married. <laughs> so, you know. Anyway, let me uh, let me go to the uh, let me go to the uh, phones here. Let me turn them on uh, first of all. Uh, let me see here. This sometimes takes a while. But for some reason, it doesn't pop up as fast. Oh, it popped up pretty fast this time. Okay, and oh, I've got to change something here, folks. I have to sign out because I was using my other line for Ronnie. So let me just, um, um, here, here we go, uh, and use another account, which would be GabNet Live. GabNet Live. And the password is hmm, yeah mm -hmm. well I'm not going to tell you what that is let me see here I, are my fingers too pudgy to get that one out no I got it out okay all right we're now we're now open for business I think I think we're still we're open for business here if you want to call uh, we'll be happy to take your call and let me let me see here uh, let me turn the Thing on so it says active there we go 
And we're ready to go anytime you're ready to go and you're ready to call. Um, so um, uh, do so. Hope you're weathering the storm and, uh, you know, aren't, uh, aren't dying of cabin fever. Uh, anyway, we're, our lines are open and you can call. Well, some nights it's like I, I can't keep up with it and other nights, oh well, here we go. Here's, uh, here's um, uh, Jeff Zeller and I believe Jeff uh, is automatically uh, takes up that bottom slot there because that's where he was the last time he called, okay? Hello, Jeff. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing yourself? good? Hey, Matt, Rob Alfano is calling. Let me, uh, I think Rob was in there. I think maybe, yep, 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 yep. We got him in there. Hello, Rob. How are you? Good. I'm hanging in there. Yeah, yeah. You, yep. You getting cabin fever yet? Or? Nah, uh, I, got, I got a lot to keep me busy. My eyes itching today. I'll tell you why. I just read this thing. This is going to be the worst uh, season for allergies ever, they say. You know, it, it, so everything else isn't so bad. Uh, uh, we got problems with the with the allergies as well. So they're going to be uh, they're going to be popping in here next as the uh, and today. I mean, my eyes were burning and uh, I was uh, uh, you know getting sniffly and everything. It was terrible. But uh, you know, none of the other symptoms. What? I've had a sore throat for two weeks. You've had a sore throat for two weeks? Yeah. You don't think it's the virus, do you? No. 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 Well, you, well, you got to say to yourself, where have I been where I could get the virus? <laughs> you know? I haven't been anywhere. I, in fact, today again, my car alerted me, better go start me. Mm hmm. Yeah. I haven't been anywhere. I haven't been to a store. I haven't been anywhere. Yeah. My throat is, uh, I, it's allergies. Oh, it absolutely. Um, yeah. especially where you live, come on, you're, you're, you're like, uh, oh, wait a minute, let me cancel here, let me cancel that, and then let me do it again so I can get Charlie's picture in here, uh, Charlie Wallace, Harry Charles Wallace, okay, there we go, we got Charles, all right, I'll do that, okay, hello, Charlie, how are you? Pretty good, Alex. Yeah. yeah, how are the allergies in your part of the woods? <laughs> Hopefully they're just allergies. Yeah, hopefully they're just allergies. Now what what do you got in that box there, Rob? Is this going to be an a, a unboxing like they do on the internet? I just got this and I I forgot. I've been sitting up here marking in and out points on music to go into the computer for my new radio station. Yeah. Internet radio station and I forgot I got this in the mail today. I looked over here. Mm -hmm. And it's a little it's a little distribution amplifier kind of patch bay thing mm -hmm. so that you can split the signal. And uh, I haven't opened it yet. Oh, and See, the, it's just a... And there it is. One okay. input and a bunch of outputs. See, ladies and gentlemen. So I take the program out of here, mm -hmm. of the board, and send it to tape machines and stuff like that. Oh, good. Well, let's see, we had our first unboxing ever on this program. So, you know... Yeah, that's a very big thing on the internet. I think maybe I should start doing unboxing, but like order stuff from Amazon that nobody really cares whether you're unboxing it or not, like K cups. You know, <laughs> here's K cups from uh, 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 Starbucks Plus, okay? Uh, but anyway, uh, so, so uh, you're all feeling good? You're all healthy? And oh, I, I have it every, every day. Yeah. At least for about two minutes. What do you mean? What? Well, I go, I, I, go, I think maybe oh, oh, I got to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Anytime. Uh, any, we're all hypochondriacs. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I'm afraid that the battery in my thermometer is going to run out. I use it so often. <laughs> you know. And then when it goes up. Wow, I'm really my, paranoid. It's like 96, 7, mm -hmm. you know, and then it goes up to 98 and I panic. <laughs> And then my goes, cousin's got the virus, Alex. My cousin Joy. Really? Yeah, she's she just the fever finally broke uh, yesterday. How long? So she's home. How long? Know, long yeah. How long did she have it? She had it over eight days. Pounding headaches. She's wow. just headaches were terrible. 
My wow. mom just got off the phone with my aunt Barbara. She said, uh, what she, call it? she said, never had a, I talked to her, she said, never felt like this in her life. Just didn't want to get off the couch. Nothing. She yeah. said the headaches were bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. it, 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 it supposedly feeling. everybody is different. Some people get the headaches. Other people don't get the headaches, but they get something else. Um, you know who it's killing most of all. You know, the largest segment of our population is dying from it are uh, blacks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, unhealthy lifestyle, right, Charlie? That's got to be it. Well, no, I mean, you know, weight, diabetes. Yeah. Um, all the things that blacks are plagued to, and I don't know Sickle why. Sickle cell? No, I don't think so. They but mentioned it today. Did okay. they Sickle really? Anemia. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, and somebody had put something up on the web saying that black people were immune. You oh, know? Really? Yeah. That was a rumor for a while. It was scared yeah. of them. <laughs> the virus is scared of them. <laughs> Yeah, she's she really Alex. So I was talking to her via Skype, and she's like, she's never. She says it's just totally knocks you on your wrist, and she says you feel the pressure on your chest. It's like somebody's sitting on you. Yeah, yeah. She says it feels very tight. Yeah. But her breathing, they gave her some kind of breathing thing to breathe it at home. She's been doing that constantly, but she, it finally, thank God, broke. But she's diabetic too, Alex. So she had a wow. she had a worry. So yeah, yeah, she had something to worry she's, about. You know, late fifties. Yeah. Well, they say so we were a little bit nervous. They say that a lot of people are getting like heart attacks and so on. That the heart is yeah. what gives out. <clears throat> um, so I mean, you know, so people who have heart problems, look at our friend Jeff here. Although he doesn't have heart problems anymore because it's not a real one, right? No, it's yeah, it's, 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 it's <laughs> Do you go out at all, Jeff? Yes, I do. Oh, really? But I'm okay. very cautious. Yeah. And when anybody comes close to me, I walk to the other side of the street. Mm -hmm. You know something though? It's funny. Uh, you know, I usually I, about things like this, I just go, oh well, if I get the flu, I get the flu. Okay. Right. And yeah. then, I, then I sit around yeah. bitching for five days while Marjorie <laughs> tends to my needs, you know, and then mm -hmm. we're okay, you know. Yeah. Uh, this one, I'm afraid to go out. I am just yeah. absolutely, and Marjorie goes to the store uh, about twice a week, and she goes at 7 in the morning, but this week she made a big mistake. She went wow. Monday morning at 7 and went in, and there was nothing on the shelves. Mm -hmm. That you should go during the middle of the week when they're replenishing the shelves. So, but uh, I, and then there's a, here, here's the thing that really got to me. So, uh, Marjorie, as you know, works for a con company out of China. And so she has people in China, and they sent uh, to their, to her, her office, uh, 250 surgical masks. But, of course, she can't get to them because she's not going to get in the car or anything to get down there. Um, and so, consequently, she asked them in, in Beijing if they would send her some. So they sent her some. So they send it to her, and the post office doesn't deliver it because they couldn't. They, there was nobody here to sign for it. What do you mean there was nobody here to sign for it? Yeah. Uh, but you can pick it up at the post office. Oh, yeah, like I'm going to that, you know, that yeah. Petri dish. Okay? So consequently, you be <laughs> consequently, we have a bunch of masks, I don't know how many, that we were thinking if we got a lot of them, we were going to put a note up in our first floor of our building, say if anybody needs surgical masks, we have them. You know, and you can have one of them until they run out, and we'll have a certain amount that we'll keep for ourselves. Uh, and and the post office, because of their the way they are, they they like they, you know they don't know that. And in fact, it even said on the thing that it was emergency something something, you know, it said EMS or something on it. So apparently, it had been marked that way so that it would get to us. And uh, here, the post office doesn't deliver it. I, I just demonetized myself with my hand. Mm -hmm. um, now, mm -hmm. what's interesting, I'll tell you an interesting story. I, I talked today, finally, to our next-door neighbor whose wife died a few days ago. 
And we, we said, what happened? You know, because we assumed maybe it was corona, you know, that it could be the coronavirus. Uh, and um, it, uh, it turns out, uh, I, we asked him what it was. Wait a minute, let me just get uh, Phil in here. Well, oh, Phil's already there. Okay, Phil already had a space there. All right. Anyway, um, um, we thought it might be the coronavirus or whatever, and he said, "No. What happened was she had I had an, a knee replaced, and the knee became infected, and she died of sepsis." Oh, the body. Was yeah. Down. Now, one of the reasons she died of sepsis was because she called a doctor and said, "Oh, my knee's killing me." He says, oh, uh, "He uh, he uh, gave her some pain medication." Now that was because he probably didn't want to, How to come in? have yeah. her come in or have to go into his office or whatever. So she didn't die of the coronavirus, but she did die of the coronavirus. Yeah. Died because of it. Yeah, yeah, because she couldn't get the proper medical care that she needed. But she didn't die of the coronavirus. That's I mean, terrible. They were married 40 years. I wow. mean, if she to the doctor, uh, she would be here today if they would have took her in. can't imagine being with somebody that's 40 true. years and then suddenly they're gone. Over that, too. That's like, that could have been helped. It, it, that it all the time. What did you say? I said it happens all the time. People are married 40, 50 years and one oh, of yeah. them died. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it happens. But, yeah, but, but, she, but she probably would still be alive, I yeah. think, if the coronavirus yeah. thing didn't yeah. exist. I mean, like I be, kept saying to Marjorie, I keep... I keep complaining about like, oh, my hernia, I think, is acting up, or uh, something else is uh, is bothering me. I'm, I may be getting a, a, a diverticulitis or whatever because I worry about these things now. Because if I did have them, there's no way I could get them treated. I mean, they're too busy with the coronavirus patients, and I'm not going to Mount Sinai. Are you kidding me? You can go to that uh, ship. What? Uh, we're not the hope. Well, they're bringing them on the ship now too. You can't go on there. I, 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 There's I, I, somebody infected on that ship. Yeah, I cleaned it up. No. You know, they tested no. one of the crew members. Really? Yeah. They tested the five people before they got on board, and they didn't have any symptoms. And the symptoms, I guess, developed after uh, they got on board the ship. And then uh, I think they're off now. But what, what are you talking about? So that. What, one it, of the it, it, one of the crew members on that ship that's docked in New York yeah, when they yeah. left Virginia, have you, uh, obviously was infected because now he's quarantined on the ship. Wow. Yeah. And the ship is now the only members. for coronavirus patients. Oh. But you would think yeah. so now, right? Yeah. So it's already I, infected. Alex, if you get sick, you're going to have to go to the Javits Center. Well, or, Javits or, Center uh, is, Javits or, Center is. Is Javits Center only Corona too? I think it is. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, Bill, uh, not Bill Graham. Uh, who, who's the preacher, Graham? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the one that had the university. Billy Graham. At the university. Anyway, his son. Oral said, Roberts, you mean? Yeah. Uh, no, not Roberts. Uh, you talking about Billy Graham or Franklin Billy Graham? Graham? Franklin Graham. That's it. Well, Franklin uh, set up uh, a, a makeshift hospital in in the uh, uh, in the park. I'm not Golden Gate. What the hell's the big park by you, Alex? Uh, Central Park. So you could go there, get a little religion, and get your arm. Uh, that's not Franklin Graham. Yeah, it is. I don't believe so. Hey. Set up a big, uh, uh, a big tent hospital. Uh, he's been doing them all over the world, and, and he just did one in uh, in uh, Central Park. Well, I know the one. It's right across from Mount Sinai. Uh, yeah, uh, probably. But yeah. That, I don't think that's him. Yeah, it's Franklin Graham. Is it? Is he that Billy Graham's son? Yeah. Is it called Samaritan? Is that the name of the organization? I don't remember. I think maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, I heard him being interviewed, and uh, and that's what he was doing. Yeah, you can check it. You know, I mean, it was something that I heard on the news. Mm, let me see here. Central Park. I don't know what you would look it up for, but... Uh, Tent Hospital. Huh? Tents in Central Park. Um, let me Tent see hospital. here. Um, it, uh, it raises Central Park Hospital tents for uh, encampment. No, for violence. Oh, that's something. Oh, oh, NYPD raises Central Park Hospital tents for violating outdoor encampment laws? No, that's not the... <laughs> yes, no, it's a picture of those. It's, they're called Samaritan. 
Oh, really? I thought yeah. it was being done After with the bulldozers had demolished the provisional treatment centers, New York City police officials confirmed Friday they had raised the newly erected Central Park Hospital tents, explaining that the structures, which house coronavirus patients, violated outdoor encampment laws. It's illegal to set up housing in a public space like this without the proper permits. Oh, boy. You can't so, go anywhere so now. So everyone days. here must disperse immediately. But I saw yesterday See, somebody was there while they were taking people into it. So apparently that problem had well, resolved itself. Where, right? Where's the story uh, coming from? Oh, this is from The Onion. This is from The Onion. I'm sorry. It's a fake story. Uh, oh, but Frank Graham is actually there, and he has a tent hospital. Well, I don't, I don't remember how many beds, but it was quite a quite a few. Franklin mm -hmm. Graham, um, it's two hundred and fifty beds. All right. Um, uh, donate today. Um, Frank Graham, uh, uh, a privilege from Mount Sinai, Queens. Today, we were grateful the partnership. I guess he is involved in doing that. Yeah, I, I understood that the mayor and yeah, uh, Samaritan's well, Purse. Actually. Samaritan's Purse is the is the organization that put up the tents. Yeah. Well, he's an asshole, but he did something nice. So, you know. yeah. Uh, it happens. You can go there if you break your arm. Unless you get the virus first, then you can go there if you break your arm. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a virus place. So that first story I read, it turns out it was the onion. You yeah. know. Um, damn the onion. Yeah. I, I'm it, it fills the one supposed to read the onion and believe it. You know? <laughs> See, I, I was right. <laughs> no drink for you. Yeah, no drink for me. Um yeah. Uh, but um uh you know what what's terrible is is actually people who who do have other things wrong with them. Although yeah. it turns out that you know, they said why were there so few people at um uh at the ship? Uh, I think there were like 20 people there. And yeah. the governor said the reason is, is that the normal reasons that people wind up at these hospitals is not happening right now. You're not going to wind up getting um, hit by a car, you know, because there are no cars, really not a lot of cars on the street. There's no, cr virtually crime is zero yeah. in New York City. OK, so, the, <laughs> so there's no, nobody in the hospital for that. You know, have you heard about the uh, automobile? I think it's all state to uh, state farm. Two companies are giving back a lot of money to their customers for insurance premiums because no one's driving. No. So they're giving. Yes. Google it. They're giving back money. The uh, the insurance companies are giving back money. Really? really? What if somebody steals the car or this, this or that, you know, well, they're not paying out right now. They I would they say, I would say, if they if they're doing that, it's a good move on their part. Number one, it's a great PR thing, but secondly, and he is right, Phil, be, the, because less people are driving, they're going to be less accidents. Yeah, just they're not as paying a out right now. General rule, even if there are accidents, whatever you know. Whatever it's going to cost you, they, what are they charging less? Or are they just not charging anything to drivers? Uh, they're giving back up. They are doing a calculation and mm -hmm. giving back millions and millions of dollars. Give, I think eight hundred million dollars. I think I read. I don't remember the number. Okay. You Take sure a look at that from the Onion? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me look up the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, pretty amazing. You know, it's pretty amazing. Um, a lot, it, what's happening here, it's something I've noticed over the last couple of nights, you know, I've told you and, and Tony can bear me out on this. And of course I can't have Jeff bear me out on it cause he lives in Connecticut and it's quiet all the time. But mm. <laughs> have you noticed how quiet it has been, Tony? outside you're right you could you know what i did like exactly what you said only the fire the ambulances yeah. no but the the the, pre only, the predominant you, the predominant sound you hear they wake me up. are the sirens yep uh, and they now the in the last couple of nights i've heard very few sirens 
I heard one last night. I think it was one thirty. Tony, and once I get up, I can't go back to sleep. So Tony, look, you know. Tony complained to me that there was a uh, guy out in front of his oh, house. Oh yeah, there was a crazy guy in front of my house Sunday morning. And he called one on. Stephanopoulos. Called the cops. Yeah, I'm like my mother's sleeping. I'm in the front of I'm watching George, and I hear some guy chanting. I said, like, "This doesn't sound normal." I said, and then I walk to the front window because I'm on upstairs. And he's going, oh, and then he takes out his liquor. He's boozing it up. He's all dolled up, looking yep. like an other yep. country. And I didn't know, no, so I called, I had to call the cops because my brother and his girlfriend were leaving. So I said, Greg, I says, you're leaving now? He says, yeah. He says, well, there's some maniac in front of the house. You're going to run him over. He says, call the cops. I had to call the cops to get him out of here. And I didn't have to call him because he was totally polluted. I didn't go downstairs. I was observing him upstairs. He was totally lit. Yeah. I don't even know. But, what but, 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 but the point I'm making, the point I'm making is, is that you don't hear. No, the last no. couple of nights, I haven't heard that many sirens, and as a result, we also hear that the admissions rates are going down. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. My okay. Friends so are I, I can almost tell by listening out the window how bad a day it's going to be the next day when Cuomo does his show. You know. He had a short one the other day. Me and my mom said it was only like a half hour. Oh, he's on every day. Bob, he's on every I day around him every day. Our, we call him our president now when we sit down. There he, he is. I he's, said, a, he's, a, he's the next president of the United States. Yes, uh, uh, really Rob. Him too. So here's the article. It's in USA Today. Auto insurance companies, including Geico, Allstate, Liberty Mutual, said they're going to give policyholders millions of dollars back because Americans are driving less during corona. Uh, Tuesday, Geico said... Uh, the uh, and uh, Geico said automotive and and, and motorcycle policyholders will receive a 15% credit. The auto insurer estimates the benefits to its customers will be worth about 2.5 billion. Geico um, cities in shelter places have uh, reduced driving significantly, and they're talking here that they're not even going to cancel policies for those for non-payment. Wow, that's nice of them. Well, you yeah. know, I, I think these companies are doing that for one very good reason, and that is if they don't, the government will do it for them, okay? Uh, state governments might say, hey, no way you're going to, but like, for instance, here in New York City right now, nobody can be evicted for non-payment of rent, oh, okay? Really? Um, yeah. Uh, don't have that in Texas. I, no, of course not. In Texas, in fact, you pay double. So... <laughs> <laughs> You get arrested. It's rough down Yeah, yeah. I've seen your, your governor. He's kind of an ass, isn't he? Yep. A major douche. Yeah. What, Abbott? Abbott, your governor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Who was his running mate? Costello? I bet. <laughs> I like Abbott. Yeah. Did yeah. you hear the, uh, <laughs> the, the college football coach? Was it Oklahoma, I think? Who said... Look, we got to get back to playing college. We got to in May. I want to start getting everybody back and the, all the students and everything back. These 18, 19, 20, and 21 year olds can live through this coronavirus. If somebody gets sick, we need to start flowing money back into Oklahoma. Isn't that just fucked up? They're taking, yeah. They know that's a big money. They want to get paid. Yeah. Uh, by the and way, they do that. Yeah. And remember, these kids don't get paid. No. Mm -mm. No. Yeah, but the coach does. Yeah, like yeah. five well, million bucks last year. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Screw well, him. Well, we're going to be four point five this year because uh, mm -hmm. you know they, they haven't played, and uh, they cut their automobile insurance. Uh, listen, I, I got a, I got a, a question, Phil. Have you uh, have, have you seen your money yet? No. Have you? Uh, although it said that uh, that they received my application. Mm -hmm. and, oh, you said they uh, did. Uh, yeah, I think you know er I have, you like have 50, 60 people that are applying for this. I'm like, I got a Facebook page that is just for owners of uh, the, my stores, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know. There's probably hundreds on there, but uh, they uh, they're all talking about not this. your stores, but this organization you belong to that oh, has. That yeah, the co-op that you're part yeah. of. You made and it sound so, like you had 60 stores. I was going to say, he's like, a, Phil, is the wrong time to ask for a raise? Imagine going to his office, not ask for a raise. that own, own them. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the, uh, the deal is 
Uh, nobody's seen it uh, yet. Nobody's got any money. And a lot of people weren't even able to get their applications in. I got in uh, within hours of... Uh, uh, within hours of them uh, opening up the uh, link. Amazing, amazing what 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 uh, greed will do for expediency. I like that, Phil. <laughs> well, I want to I want to come out of this uh, and put it still intact. Yeah, and this is a way I can pay them, uh, even though they're not going to be working. You know, because mm -hmm. they're hunkered at home. Uh, there, uh, at least, uh, you know, the landlord can be made whole. Everybody gets made whole, and that's what this is all about: is not tanking the economy. So yeah. uh, I'm doing my part to keep the economy. Now, in I, I, does anybody here have a cleaning woman at all? Yeah. Somebody yeah. comes in and cleans. You do. Uh, yeah. Is, yeah, is she is still coming in and cleaning, or no? The no. Have so, women. Uh, so women. The hold on a second, Phil. I'm asking a question here. Um, so, um, she didn't come in. Are you still paying her anyway? No, not. We are. We are. Uh, yeah. my friend Shecky's paying the woman <laughs> who owes, does his yeah. place. That's nice. Yeah. 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 And she, he, ours is once every two weeks. His is every week. Um, um, I, I, I we felt we had to do it, you know, uh, because, we didn't want her to at least, if she was going to suffer, we didn't want to have to be part of that suffering. You know, I, I've yeah. been tipping like 50%. You know, you go in, you get a sandwich or something to go. Uh, I'm or, not even going places like that. I don't want to get, I'm afraid, afraid, afraid to I'm leave the house. Yeah, I'm like you, Alex. I, I make my well, sandwich you, you know, your listeners, your listeners created a GoFundMe for me. Really? Did you see? No. no. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the prize is I get the coronavirus. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The prayer to God it gets you. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, you know, I just uh, I'm 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 scared to go out. And anytime Marjorie goes out and she says tomorrow, she's I just got to get out of here and take a walk, and I'm going. Please don't. You know, I said, I, you know, I know it's a terrible thing that we're stuck in here. And what's terrible, what's even worse, is we're having some beautiful spring days out there now. And, and our mom and y'all can How's the pollen? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, brutal. But, but still, you look out the window and you want to be out there. You want to take a walk. I can't even walk anymore. I try to walk around the house here and my legs are hurting. And it's like, you know, I'm, you want to talk about out of shape. And this has so, been a month now. This is a month now. In New York, that yeah. so all the pollen that you have now, it's a good thing that they don't allow anybody to own a gun. Because if somebody sneezes, uh, there's going to be a lot of homicides in, uh, in New York. Well, wife beating, uh -oh. wife beating is up. Yeah. 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 And uh, there, it's only going to be a matter of time before this thing starts turning ugly rather than right now it's everybody singing out their windows and they're they're applauding the you know whatever the uh, the, the the hospital workers and and things like that in a couple of weeks they're all going to be going don't talk to me hey, I, I, don't, I don't i don't want to yeah, huh i thought all the cops were out sick 20 percent yeah a lot really here 20 percent yeah new york wow Jeez. Yeah, so if you beat your wife, you'll get away with it now. <laughs> oh, I, I felt really bad. I, these two cops that were waiting when the woman died here, they were waiting for the for either the ambulance or the coroner, I think, to come yeah. uh, because the wife was in the apartment dead. And, um, There's a vacancy? Huh? Not as a vacancy. Not at my rates. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean... I, and and we liked them. They were really nice, uh, especially him. He was always he's always been nice to me ever since we moved in. And uh, it's just it's it it but uh, um, it's just the whole uh, it whole thing. I think is going to start getting ugly. Yeah. Uh, I I give it maybe another week because even I'm feeling it. You know, I found myself snapping at Marjorie today, and I don't usually do that. You, know. you got to sing. I love it. Ah. I love being home. I do. I mean, well, I no, like being it, home too. Like Rob, I enjoy it's, going. To it's nice being home. You, what, you, you got a backyard? Yeah. Yeah. So I worked outside yeah. under yeah. the tent. Oh, under yeah. the awning That's yesterday. Cool. Yeah, my backyard. I have to go down to the courtyard, and already oh. that's you know scares me. 
you know, because I've got to touch all the handles on the way out, you know. Although I'm wearing, I wear rubber gloves. Yeah. yeah. You know, I got the rubber gloves. I, I saved the ones my doctor used when he gave me a rectal exam. So I, uh... <laughs> the only thing I miss is baseball. Yeah, I miss my Yankees. You know what I feel guilty about? Every time, I used to have a thing, every time I go to a hospital, okay, like to visit a friend who was sick, like when Jack was sick and so on. Uh, or I would go there for one reason or another. When the nurse wasn't there, I would steal two gloves and take them home with me. It was just, it was a tradition with me. And now I feel guilty about it. Because that's, I feel like Schindler. Oh, if I hadn't stolen these two gloves, these could be used to save one more life. You know. So. Hey, uh, yeah. did you hear the joke? Uh, about the, the woman that was uh, arrested for shoplifting. And she goes to the court, and the judge says to her, uh, what did you steal? She says, I stole a can of peaches. And she says, he, the judge says, well, how many peaches were in the can? And she says, there were nine peaches. He says, okay, then you're going to get nine, nine days in jail. And then the husband stood up, and, she, and he says, she also stole a can of peas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm trying to remember the end of this joke, but it was uh, 20 years ago. Johnny Cash was alive. Um, I, I, I wish I could remember the whole thing. It was really good, but anyway. Um, Can you go up on uh, on your roof? Uh, I could, but I'm frightened to go up there. Only to jump. Yeah. I'm frightened to go up there. It scares me. It's not finished. It's not like a courtyard up there. No, it's it, it, it's it's 19 it, years old. Yeah, it's, it's uh, what do you mean 19 years old? It's 100. 19 it's years 100, old. 100 and 20, 120 years old. That roof. Yeah, so it should be finished by now. Yeah, you would yeah. think they would put a little garden up there. A lot of cities, you know, the city apartment buildings do that. Yeah, well, not our guys. You know, we can barely get them to keep the courtyard going. You know. They got a sign up there. Mm -hmm. uh, jump. <laughs> That's the way they raise this way them. down. Yeah. Yeah. There was this thing I I got. Phil will hate this, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to re just read part of it. Um, it. Said, why do some people not like Br Donald Trump? Nat White, an articulate and witty writer from England, wrote the following response. A few things spring to mind. I'm just going to read a couple of paragraphs here. Trump lacks certain qualities which the British traditionally esteem. For instance, he has no class, no charm, no coolness, no credibility, no compassion, no wit, no warmth, no wisdom, no subtlety, no sensitivity, no self-awareness, no humility, no honor, and no grace. All qualities, funnily enough, with which his predecessor, Mr. Obama, was generously blessed. So far for us, the stark contrast does rather throw Trump's limitations into an embarrassingly sharp relief. Uh, gee, I thought they were describing me. But the last line that I, uh, uh, that I, that uh, the last couple of lines that I like here, where, where was it? Where was this? Uh, um, it was, uh, oh yeah, okay, it says, and a remorseful Dr. Frankenstein would clutch out big clumpfuls of hair and scream in anguish, my God, what have I created? If being a twat was a TV show, Trump would be a box set. Yeah, well, their, their leader is in the hospital. Uh, you know, uh, I guess they're not incubating him, but... Uh, not incubating him? Well, yeah, they stick. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They incubate him, and then, uh, then after about uh, two days, uh, an egg hatches, and a, a bird comes out. What incubated? Yeah, ventilate, ventilate, intubate. Same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's close enough for Trump. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. And they haven't in incubated him or intubated him. Well, <laughs> Trump made a great deal on incubators, but he didn't get any ventilators. He's sending all the incubators to New York. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now you know how it feels for some comics when they don't get a laugh. Well, yeah, yeah I got a laugh. You you just, you know, we're swallowing it. Yeah. 
But anyway, it, it, you have to think when you're on stage. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I, I was thinking of doing uh, this show in the afternoon for a couple of weeks while this is going on so that people could all have a place to have something to do during the day. But then I found out that a lot of my regulars found that it was going to be inconvenient for them. So I've decided not to. I'm, I might do some anyway and still do the evening show as well. You know, yeah, regulars are going to be out infecting people uh, in the park. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So, um, I but, don't feel so bad. I go to the office every day. Uh, you know, I'm in my office. I'm by myself. The mm -hmm. store is locked. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I do stuff. What do you do? I, I write up estimates. Uh, I follow up on you know with phone. I collect money. Uh, you know. Does it, I, I'm surprised out. that anybody's willing to let you come out. over and install anything. Well, yeah. I got. Some people installing right now. Uh, a lot of the houses we do, they're empty. Yeah, but I still think, as I told you the other day, that it's not a good idea. Yeah, it's really it's not. It, uh, it, yeah, no, but because some know, of some of those some of those homes do have people in them, correct? But they're not around. That doesn't matter, Phil. If you have, say, let's say you have an installer and he's not coughing, he's not doing anything, and no. he's, he's uh, but he may have it and not be showing signs of it. Yeah. And, well, and, 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 I, and so they, you know, maybe leave something behind and they, people come home and they just touch the top of a counter and, and then they scratch their nose and they got it. You, you know, uh, my carpet guys wear gloves and a mask. Yeah. Well, that's only because they're trying to rob the place. Yeah. <laughs> cleaning this out. Yes, yes, Jeff. Yeah, I was talking to somebody today, uh, one of the engineers that I know, and they got a call from Vermont, and they said, we need some equipment, and we can't get it, no matter where the hell we try. And they said, can you get some kind of a breathing device put together? And he goes, you're talking about something that's FDA approved and all of that? He goes, no, I need it like this week. Scuba tank? That's what I did. Right. Really? right. He went and bought a bunch of scuba, 500 scuba equipment. And regulators. And, and regulators and, a pump, and they get their own pump. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, they're sending them all to Vermont. That was smart. And what are they going to yeah. do? What are they going to do with them? They're going to use them for breathing. Oh, for breathing. Oh, yeah. Uh, but 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 for for people who have coronavirus and they're having a hard time breathing. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, why don't they use CPAP machines? I could sell them. I got two. <laughs> yeah. You know. You know. They they have face masks that go over there and they push. Yeah, air. they push. Yeah, uh, and they push a lot of air. Yeah, they do. I, because the uh, scuba tank, you you have to breathe in on your own. To make it work, but the CPAP machine, uh, and the CPAP also has uh, a thing where you can add uh, moisture so that they don't dry out. Right. Uh, I think that would be even a better uh, way to go. I don't know why nobody has mentioned that or at least considered that as a possibility. You know, while well, it's probably well, Donald Trump, I'll let him know. Yeah, I'd donate mine. They could have them. Yeah. <laughs> Charge them. Uh -huh. If I don't sleep with that thing, I don't. I don't wake up right. Uh, you know, uh, I really need it. it. What a difference it makes! Ever since I lost weight, I don't snore anymore. Me too. It's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, that's true. You two guys are svelte now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm putting on a few pounds because I'm. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not eating. I'm still much. losing. Huh? Serious losing. I'm still in a serious. Everybody's gaining. They keep saying it that uh, people are putting on the. You know, the 10, 15 pounds from sitting home, Yeah, I'm still dropping. You're, you're doing the thing where you don't eat, uh, uh, you fast. Intermittent fasting, yep. Yeah. But it's low carb still. Right. So I'm still doing low carb. Well, but I, I still, yesterday I didn't yeah. eat. What's that? You're doing 20 hours now? 20 hours? No, I'm doing like I'll do 30 hours. Really? So I, didn't, I didn't eat yesterday. Wow. But you get used to it. It's just, it's, and you know what? I feel freaking amazing. It, my nutritionist is trying to get me to do that uh, intermittent fasting. She said, just start with like 12 hours. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, really, I, it works I, I, really I, well. All, and, all, and everything, skin, my skin, I had all kinds of rash. That's all gone. Wow. I mean, it's amazing the stuff that's cleared up that I had. I've been saved. <laughs> well, True. I uh, uh, today I didn't eat that much, but I haven't actually been eating that much. Uh, but I still th- feel like I'm getting a little, I don't know. And also, I, I've got my stomach. Uh, uh, I, uh, if I can say this, I've had the trots for days now, you know. <laughs> and I think it has something to do with the radiation, you know. Oh, so, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, but uh, but I uh, you know, so it's gonna last for how long? Like three months? The radiation? No, I got another month, two months, and then it dies. Just yeah. completely disappears. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I would like to get to the uh, to to the place and get my blood tested, and I would love to have my CAT scan and all that CT scan. Uh, but I I'm not gonna go anywhere to do that. I think I'm uh, I'm not going to Mount Sinai. Okay, forget it, you know. Uh, uh, Franklin Graham's got a place down on at the park. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it, you know, I mean, it's, it's. Uh, um, uh, I'm not doing that. And I'm not going, I'm not going to Quest Labs. I mean, it, it, who knows? It, it, and there's, by the way, there, you, if you go in early enough in the day, uh, you can, as a senior, you can go in early to Quest mm-hmm. Labs. But I don't, you know, I, 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 I don't want to take that chance. And I mean, yeah, uh, ch- chances are nothing's going to happen bad. But I finally told my, uh, the nurse at my doctor's office, because she's the only one I deal with. The doctor doesn't talk to me. He's too busy. Um, and, you know, uh, and I said to her, you know something, I know you want, you said, okay, you don't have to do the CT scan now. You can do it in three months. But uh, would you do, a, a, you know, do the um, uh, blood test. And initially I said yes, and then I wrote her and I said, I'm even frightened to do that. And she says, then it can wait. Wait a couple of weeks until things are, you know, a little mm-hmm. better here. Can you get a visiting nurse to, to come over and, and draw the blood, a phlebotomist? Mm-hmm. That's an interesting idea. It's an interesting idea, yeah. You know, but I'm sure my, me- my medical plan won't pay for that. You know. yeah, but, oh, you just tell them, look, you know, coronavirus, uh, you're exposing me. I can't do it. The doctor wants yeah. this and the uh, high risk PSA test. Uh, you know, this is cancer. And look, you know, uh, I, you know, I want the PSA test because I got to, you know, know what's going on. Uh, well, you know. you know, it's an interesting concept. I'm, I'll, ask, I'll ask Marjorie what she thinks. If she I got life insurance out. one time and they sent a nurse to my uh, yes. to my place of business to uh, to take blood and do all of that stuff. Of course, you know, the question is right now, could I find a nurse? You know, I mean, to yeah. get any medical care except for the coronavirus is almost impossible right now. Well, you know, uh, they said that because there are no elective procedures, that there's a ton of nurses and doctors that aren't working right now. Uh, uh, why would they be working on? Why wouldn't they be working in the hospital? They do. I guess the the, the news reports I heard was that uh, uh, nurses and uh, and and doctors that normally you know do other stuff, elective procedures, uh, because they they don't have any, and then the hospitals are suffering because they don't have the income from it. Well, that doesn't make sense though, because they just put out a whole New York put out a, a you know a, a plea. For medical staff to help. Yeah. Well, maybe those people aren't showing up <laughs> uh, uh, because they don't want to get the coronavirus. Up, oh, a- Alex. He's he's got it. He's got it. <laughs> no, that's. Uh, I know the difference between a cold sneeze and an allergy sneeze. I'll and that you too. And that's an allergy sneeze. <laughs> you know. It's going to affect us all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, all I'm saying is that that that. Uh, uh, you know, that, that idea of the pa- uh, CPAP machines, who yeah. knows? I mean, I don't know why that wouldn't work. If you say that that pushes air into your... Yeah, it does. Negative pressure? You can, yeah, you can adjust the pressure. Well, yeah, sort of. It's negative pressure, and it, and it, and it forces it in either yeah. into your nose and your mouth, and it keeps your throat well, open. He, here's and, the only reason I think it's a bad idea. That, I, because all the medical people in the world haven't thought 
of that as an answer. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a, you know, they, they have certain, they, there's certain survival tactics they've been using, like, for instance, anesthesiologists use certain equipment that can be used in place of I intubation. And, um, uh, but the, the, that's the closest I heard of this kind of thing. Now, of course, we have, of course, Trump's cure. You yeah, hydroflavin. Yeah, whatever the name of that thing is. Um, Hydra. Hydra something uh, with the Z-Pack. Yeah. You do realize that Trump... Did you send this to me, Charlie? I've seen this I've seen in several places. A Trump. Wait a minute. Huh? What did you say, Jeff? I heard somebody said that he owns. I've heard all of these No, things no, no. Right. He is yeah. invested in a fund that has as one of its yep. holdings the company that makes that yep. drug. Yeah. 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 That's but why he's been pushing it. I invested in, in a fidelity fund. That is the uh, that is the Dow industrial thing, and that's every stock on the thing. So of course I own that stock too. No, but he it, 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 one of the companies that it uh, it is heavily invested in, and that he would benefit from is this company. Yeah, well, you know, you hear a lot of this stuff, but you don't know that it's true. And uh, I, well, you know, I, I know, they, I know said, that this is true because it, it, they had all the uh, all the particulars on it. Well, yeah, everybody knows what the stock is and what the company is, except me. Uh, and uh, you know, so they can they accuse Trump of eating his young. Come on, you know, you believe these yeah. stories? Uh, uh, I've heard how he feels about his daughter. I'm sure he's tried to eat her <laughs> any number of times. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm talking about cannibalism. Oh. Not love, but you know, all I'm saying is, is that um, uh, the um, you know this giving out this advice, it really got to me the other day because it was so misinformed and the wrong thing to do in this situation, especially to all those people who have lupus who can't get the drug for their lupus and they have to take it on a fairly consistent basis. You've heard these stories, right, uh, uh, Charlie? He yeah. did it again tonight. Yeah. Hydrochloroquine? Is that That's right? right. Yeah. 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 Pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, close. And, uh, and, uh, the <clears throat> bought 29 million doses. Mm hmm. Uh, so that, uh, oh, yeah. you know, and he's saying, hey, if it's keeping people with lupus from getting the coronavirus, why not take it? There, it's side effect for other people too. Because it has, because because it has to. Coronavirus is treating their lupus. In yeah, or, but in order so, in order to make it work, you have to take an antibiotic, uh, uh, Zithromax. Zith 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 and the combination of the two can give you a heart attack. Hmm. Yep. Okay. Well, I heard that there were no side effects. Uh, to the hydrochloric wrong, wrong. wrong. If, you, no. if you look at the that literature heart attacks in combination with an antibiotic are can cause a heart attack yeah and he is telling you go see your doctor go get this he, get it with a zithromax what have you got to lose? Yeah. yeah I don't think he does what do you got to lose what have you got to lose your life your life that it's life said that uh, his infection—it wasn't Fauci. It was his infectious disease guy said that you know the, they just don't have enough data to determine if it's going to work, but they don't know that it isn't going to work. Oh, and by the way, Joseph Gardner writes on our on our uh, chat here. Uh, both CPAP and BiPAP, whatever BiPAP is. BiPAP's a more powerful one. Well, yes, okay. were mentioned by Cuomo as methods they have adapted to use if needed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think like a Democrat. No, you think like a... Uh, <laughs> you and Andrew Cuomo. Yeah. yeah. What, do you, what do you think about Cuomo? To, uh, uh, um, um, Phil. Phil. No, not Phil. I don't want to talk to you. What the fuck? Okay. Tony, what do you think of him? 
me and my mother love him. We like Andrew Cuomo. We watch him every day. Mm-hmm. And he's a guinea, too. So we got a smart guinea there. Usually he's, we're kind of stupid. So yeah, smart guinea. <laughs> but actually, he, no, actually, I think he is genuine, like you said. I actually trust him. I like how he, he assures you of everything. It, it isn't a fact, fact. It isn't the point, you know. I mean, Trump likes like to say, well, guy. I was just trying to not panic people. Well, that is a difference between not panicking people and making them say, you're lying to me. I don't believe it. You're not telling me the truth. In the case of Cuomo, every day he is telling you the truth. And sometimes it's not stuff you want to hear. But he tells you the truth as he knows it. And then when it's an opinion of his, he says, now this is my opinion. And up on the screen they put my opinion. Yeah, I like the little play-by-play stuff. Okay, he does ball. like a PowerPoint presentation. And there's a PowerPoint presentation that's incredible. It is like great again with the thing going and you script. walk away like from it going really look look you know i i know we're in trouble here but uh i know there's somebody running this state who's doing the best job he can to save my life you know and and that i think is is what we need in the leadership in our country and Trump is one of the most unbelievable people in america unfortunately, unfortunately. and you not, know what i wish and, they would do well, alex can Joe Biden step down and give it to Cuomo? Well, I don't think Cuomo wants it, okay, at least at this point in his life. Right now, I think he's more interested in solving this problem than capitalizing on it to become president of the United States. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of governors in not in this election, but in the next four years, you're going to see a lot like they, they're talking great about the, uh, the governor of, of Illinois, Lots of these governors. Well, you know what they're doing. What they're doing. Stage. Cuomo went on, just decided every day I've got to do. I think he took a certain clue from what Giuliani did during 9/11. That I've got to go on every day and talk to the people and tell them what's going on. And he started doing it. And then other governors thought, hey, that's not a bad idea. I should do that too. And now you have a whole bunch of governors. I've seen, I've gone to certain channels like, uh, I, I think it was C, is C, C, is, uh, CB, the guy CBSN, in was, where they were running just one governor after another giving his speech, speech for the day. And Cuomo has turned it into something that governors are using as a method of talking to their, uh, to their people. They and, have to stick together because they don't have a federal government to help. Well, uh, they've been told that by the federal government. By, by, the federal by government Trump. said, you guys are on your own. Trump That's said that. Said. Trump yes, said that yeah. they, he would get them whatever they needed. Sure. Then, and then you it's talk the to the governors and they get 3% of what they asked for. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't. I don't know that to be true. Oh, I, I'm just telling I know you, you don't know that to be true. Uh, but how would the governors lie? Oh, they're grandstanding. No, they're you know, not. Uh, even a Ju- your uh, your buddy there in New York, Cuomo, he says, "Well, you tell me if I don't get thirty thousand ventilators, uh, which which people you're going to choose to die." You know, I mean, but that's the case. That's, that's, the, that's a that's a reality, true. Phil. I know, I know that if, if, if we haven't gotten to that point yet, where we need more ventilators than we've got at this point, now that could happen in the next couple of days. Or we may have hit the plateau, and it's going to drop off, and that won't be needed. But if it gets to that, and suddenly I were to come down with this, and I'm lying there, and there's a guy 40 years old lying there, and they got to give one of them the machine, guess who they're giving it to? Mm-hmm. The, the guy who grabs it first. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, so, I mean, it isn't, it, 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 you're, you're acting like Cuomo is trying to panic people, and he's not. He's yes. saying this is what we need in order to make sure we have at hand what we Unlike need for the, the, for, the for the worst case scenario. Unlike yeah. our the president, pre- they're listening to the doctors and the science. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Oh, this yeah. will pass. Yeah. And what the doctors and the science are saying is that there are no good models to determine how much they need. So and don't how bother much- with anything? Is that what you're so, saying? They can only go by the numbers that they have. Yes, but yeah. they're not accurate. Well, so what do you want to do? Just just what? throw it, toss caution to the wind, and just go, eh, here's 3%. Well, what I want you to do is test people. 
Now they've done but one point. And eight. why don't we have oh, enough tests test. in this country? They've done one point eight million tests as of today. Yeah, out of three hundred and fifty million. Out of, out of three hundred and fifty million people, yeah, we're we're getting there, Phil. Absolutely. We're getting there. <laughs> we'll all be dead by the time we get. We'll all be dead by the time. Yeah, I. In fact, you'll be ninety by the time they get to the last person with the test. Oh, after the test, I'm already dying. You want to take the test? I'm here for the grave. Got <laughs> people are waiting five days to get the results of the test. Uh, yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. After Abs. Well, let me, let's put it this way. You'll get the test as fast as you're going to get your money from the government. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. it for tonight. It's Phil, tough. Phil, okay. Phil, the arguing is over. You don't have to make any points anymore. You don't have yeah. to have to suck Trump dick. No, you can yeah. stop now. $150 billion. You can stop uh, now. He's he's come. Okay? All right. Anyway, uh, yeah. that's it for tonight. Uh <laughs> I almost I wasn't looking at the clock. I looked over and went, it's over. Yeah. yeah. Oh, anyway, we'll be back. Don't have a minute. Anyway, thank you very much uh, uh, to our citizen panel, which consisted of Rob Alfano and Charles Wallace and uh, uh, Tony and Jeff. And of course, the lovely and attractive Phil, I'll blow Trump for, for CPAP machine. Uh, I haven't even got your, you can talk all you want to. I haven't got your mic up. They, nobody can hear you. You're just talking into thin air. Everybody, <laughs> wave goodbye, will you? And I'll wave back goodbye. All right, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. There's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, we'll do it again tomorrow night, too, you know. Uh, why? Because we have to. Anyway, stay tuned now for the next show, which is, of course, The Intersection with Jack Bishop. I'll be back again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, as always, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.